Yo, y'all remember Taken? That movie where Liam Neeson went off because his daughter got kidnapped that somehow got two sequels? Well, I just found a manoir that's pretty much that, but take Liam Neeson and replace him with Batman. Because the father we're about to talk about in this manoir is a different breed due to make Yujiro Hanma blush. And the best and craziest part is that this manoir falls in the same universe as one of my favorites, Viral Hit. So without much further ado, let's talk about Manager Kim. Yo, what up people? It's your boy, the Black Macedonchi. Don't mind the mess, I apologize. I'm moving, I'm getting ready to move in with my girl. It's gonna be lit, gonna have a new studio and shit. I feel like I've told a lot of people on Twitch, but nobody on YouTube knows about the move. But yeah, by the time you see this video though, I'm probably already gonna be in my new space. So, uh, hey, last video in the old spot, let's go. Anyway, back to the manhwa. This shit begins right in the thick of it. We have our protagonist, Manager Kim, apologizing to some family because his daughter, Minji, got into a fight with their daughter, Hieri. And Minji's pissed because she's the one who got bullied and her father's apologizing. The teacher's even like, yo, Minji can't be getting into fights like this, but Minji's completely innocent. But the problem is, Hieri's father is a big company manager and he's thinking about getting into politics, so the school doesn't really want to get, get involved with all that shit. But hold up, hold up. Can we just talk about this girl's crazy ass scary looking father like man looks like all might when he opens his eyes he looks nothing like Harry, bro i have so many questions why you look like this fam you like the president dude from metal gear rising like get the fuck out of here anyway after that mess kim and his daughter leave the school and minji is pissed she's not trying to talk to her dad kim knows that he did her dirty you know he knows that he shouldn't have apologized but he understands how the world works and he can't really do anything in that situation either however at the same time i understand where minji's coming from because it's like bro you're my parent. At least let me know you're on my side, fam. Don't make me think I'm crazy. You know what I mean? But then Minji starts going off saying, oh, why did you have me if you're just going to be a regular small company manager? She even has the audacity to say, maybe someone so incompetent shouldn't have had me. All right, hold up, hold up. I was with you until you started wilding, Minji. You can't be coming at your dad like this. Dude still pays the bills. He's the reason why you have a place to sleep. Chill, fam. But Minji's not having it. So she's like, you know what? Since you want to be pussy, I'm I'm not even coming home today. I'm going to my friend Kiri Yong's house. And she abandons her dad while Kim is just like, damn, bro, being a father sucks. But this is the crazy part. Minji didn't even go to her friend's place. She went to Hieri's place, which is a really dumb idea. Since she's a bully in a manwa, you already know she's involved with the gang shit. She hangs with these thugs from KK Crew. So while I do commend Minji for, you know, coming in and trying to stand up for herself, don't think you should have entered her domain to fight, you know? So after arguing, Minji and Harry go at it but this this crazy ass big ass dude who they're probably gonna tell me is a high schooler even though he does not look like one named Minho Song he's like bitch don't fuck with my girl and start attacking this woman Minho you are a grown ass man basically chill bro like this dude is huge his palm is the side of her whole face like every time he strikes her it's like a critical hit what is wrong with you but to make matters worse, Sherry comes in and is like, oh, we're not done yet. Picks up a rock and smacks her in the back of the head with it. Bro, bro, what? What? We are not even halfway into chapter one. What's going on? So Minji falls, hits another rock, and she fucking dies. Taken ain't got nothing on this, bro. So all of a sudden, everybody starts freaking out, including Harry. And I'm just like, bro, you're the one who picked up the rock. How are you freaking out? I thought you wanted to kill her. So people in the crowd are like, oh shit, we gotta call the cops. And then this bitch ass nigga Min Ho is like, hey, you're all accomplices. If y'all call the cops, I'm a snitch and everybody's getting in trouble. Instead of calling the cops, Min Ho calls on the head of KK crew and is like, yo, bro, can we, ha can, can y'all handle this please? But the, the head's not trying to hear it. So Sherry grabs her phone and is like, hey, yo, my dad is Gang Chun Ju, head of Ju Young Construction, and we need a cleanup job. Yo, Sherry, you are a 
high school girl. Why are you saying this so casually? Like, this is a little girl who was talking about cleanup work. Basically code for pick up and clean up this dead body, please. So from this, we already know Ju Yoon Construction is probably the main antagonist of this whole manhwa. So they get picked up by a crime boss named Kai. They throw the body in the trunk and Hyeri and them are like, yo, what are you gonna do with her? And this man is like, we're gonna send her body to Japan and compress her to the size of a fucking fist. Son, this just got so dark. But there is a slight, slight bit of hope because we look at the trunk and we see Minji is twitching, which means she's still alive. But does that even matter because she's about to be crushed into a cube, bro? What is this? So finally, after all that shit, we get back to Father Kun Kim. We see that he's been waiting all night for Minji, fell asleep, and he realized she's still not here. He goes about his day and peeps the crime scene of where she supposedly got killed. And the first thing he notices is Sherry's hair tie. So he's like, hmm, sus. Calls up Sherry Young and is like, yo, did Minji come over your place? Cause she said she was going to your place. And Hyori Young's like, nah, bro. So this pisses Kim off, bro. And I was kind of scared because the veins in my man's neck were on snicker level, bro. So somehow Kim tracks down Min Ho and Hyori. But because Min Ho got surprised by this dude just sneaking up on him, he starts grabbing him up all aggressively and shit, trying to start a fight. And then we get sent to a flashback and whoo, oh shit. All right, so manager slash father Kun Kim was not always father Kun Kim. Before he was Sergeant Kim and Sergeant Kim has a pretty fucking crazy resume, bro. This man is basically a super spy who invaded North Korea 17 times. By the way, this is all fictional. Fictional characters, not trying to sugar anyone. Fictional characters, YouTube, do not attack me. Attempted to assassinate the fictional North Korea Supreme Leader and even has China and Russia making a team just to handle his crazy ass. Bro, how are you so much of a problem? You have two different countries making the Avengers just for you. Apparently, the only reason why he left his outfit was because he found someone that he liked, put a baby in her, and he was trying to be the father who was in the army when he was about to have a child. So this dude had so much good father energy built into him. He was like, bro, ain't nobody keeping me away from my future daughter. And Mans had to threaten his outfit just to get out because Mans so much of a problem, his existence itself compromises foreign affairs. That was an exact quote from the Manwa. So after that crazy ass flashback, Min Ho's dumbass, for whatever reason, takes off his shirt and is like, hey, old man, you want to take off your shirt too? You were already prepared to fight him. Why are you taking off? I'm so, is this what people do? I thought that was like when shit was getting serious, but okay, okay, I won't ask questions. And then he rips off Kim's shirt and he sees. Bro, you know how Yujiro Hanma has the demon back? This dude got the demon torso, bro. Slashes everywhere, scars, bullet wounds, bruh. He has bullet wounds in so many places. How is he still alive? My man's palms even have scars on them. Like, bro, is he just palming knives for training? What's good with him? So after being assaulted, my man Kim shows that he believes in the fuck them kids lifestyle, especially when it comes to his daughter's life and beats the dog shit out of Minho fam. Now, I just wanna preface this by saying, I am not a fan of violence against children. Do not hit kids. However, this dude is partially responsible for his daughter disappearing, so he deserves all the hands he's getting. So Kim tortures Min Ho so much that Hyeri faints because she's shook by the craziness. And through this, Kim gets the info he needs to find the head of KK crew, Min Cho Oh. This dude is currently shaking down some father because he didn't pay back his loan. But because this is manager Kim, we have to up the stakes a little bit. Because he did not pay his loan, they are now preparing to harvest his daughter's organs. Bro, did you not, did you not read the, I, I feel like somewhere in the contract, it would have said, we're gonna savage your family, bro. Like, how did you not read the contract? Contract. And why are you making loans with a fucking gang? Don't do that shit. That never leads to good. And the worst part is that this guy is like, oh, you could take her place. And my man looks down. Now, people, I'm not saying volunteering to have your organs harvested is an easy thing to do, but this is your daughter, bro. Do something. I don't know. Like, use those fucking tapes of Taibo you have in your closet. Use that shit. Use Billy Blank's martial arts. I don't know. Dude even has the audacity to look away while they're taking his daughter away and the daughter is screaming, Dad, please save me. Yo. <laughs> 
seen some pretty fucked up fathers in anime, but this dude right here needs to be up there in the tier list, dead ass. But luckily for them, manager Kim busts in waving them hands. Fucks up pretty much everybody there. Then once he gets to the boss, this nigga Min Cho tries to jump out the window. One of these guys, one of the guys that Kim beat up called him Big Bro. How you gonna leave your little bros hanging like that, bro? But it doesn't even matter because Kim is the most efficient dude in the world. Dude laid out a spider web wire trap all over the neighborhood. The moment the dude found out, Kim was already on his ass. Y'all see why I call this dude Batman, bro. The prep. The prep is obscene. So like his other victims, Kim starts torturing Min Cho to get his information. And Min Cho is down bad, bro. Like his face is fucked up. Then things get tense. Kim opens up his briefcase to show that he's been carrying the blicky this whole time. Now I'm not gonna hold you. This is this is kind of wild, but Kim empty-handed is kind of scarier than Kim with the gun. Not gonna hold you. I just feel like with the gun, it's quick. With, with the hands, it's slow and, and very, very painful. Painful. Like I'm positive his palms feel like sandpaper, bro. But as he walks up to this dude with the gun because he has had it, he drops his own little monologue and this shit is terrifying, bro. He's like, you call a kid who lost their parent an orphan. You call a wife who lost her husband a widow. But there is no word for a parent who loses their child. That's because they become this agonized being who has nothing to lose. So you can just call me a lawless middle-aged man. Then he points the gun at this man's balls and shoots. Bro! It's chapter two! What the fuck? But he did not actually shoot him in the balls. He, he didn't actually shoot him in the balls, shot him in the leg. But still, he shot him! This guy is out of his mind! Then to make the shit even more tense, this guy goes up to him and is like, my fist is faster than the law and everybody involved in my daughter's appearance is gonna catch this fucking smoke. Yo, I pray for everybody in this manoir, fam, because this dude, Kim, is about to body the whole fucking world. Dead ass. So he gets ready to head out, you know, he packs everything up, but right before he leaves, Min Chul's phone rings. He picks it up, and he sees a text from the gang boss saying, Minji is confirmed dead. Not like this. This nigga Min Cho about to die, bro. Oh God, yo. If I was in Min Cho spot, no cap, I would have wet myself. If I didn't already, bro. Cause I have a bullet wound in my leg. I what am I supposed to do? I can't run. Even if I run, he's faster than me. There's a spider web around the fucking house. What do you do? Nothing. Basically, that's that's all you can do. So Kim sheds some tears because how do you take that? But he quickly wipes him away because he has no time for that. He tries texting the group chat and we see that on the other side, it's Kai. And Kai peeps, he's like, oh wait, nah. If, if someone texted back, this may be sus. Delete the group chat, throw away the phones, we're going ghost. And Kim sees this and he turns to Min Cho and he's like, Yo, you got five seconds to give me some fucking answers, bro. But as he's about to go in, the father, the bitch ass father whose daughter's organs were about to get harvested, he tries to stab manager Kim. Why are you even still here? What the fuck? So then my man's like, oh, I saved your ass. Now, now, now you can let me go, right? But then Min Cho's like, nah, bro, stab him again. And I'm over here like, yo, both of y'all are terrible. But obviously Kim is too nice for that. We see that Kim does a knife, it's under his arm. He grabs it and he gets ready to stab Min Cho. But then luckily for Min Cho, the cops show up and the cops are terrified of this man, bro. The dude holding the taser is like, yo, drop the knife, please. Don't do anything crazy, bro. So my man is brought to the station. They're asking him questions, but he's not answering. And they fail to do a backup check on him. Like that's how much of a problem this dude is. He's not even in the system. So everyone's confused, you know, but then suddenly, Kim's phone rings and it's his daughter calling him. The lead detective was doing something at this point. My man turned around and saw the whole police station destroyed, bro. Like, yo, fuck being Batman. Is this dude Barry Allen? Like, how you do that so quick? Somebody's head cracked on the glass. Like, what? Then Kim pulls up the detective and he's like, shush. He picks up the phone. Nobody answers. Then he tries calling it back and it goes straight to voicemail. So with that, Kim leaves knowing that his daughter may be alive. We don't really know yet. And to find out what happens next and if his daughter actually is alive, 
you're gonna have to read the manual for yourself. People, I need you to understand this shit only gets wilder and to avoid this on Webtoon, to not read this would be a crime. So do yourself a favor and please pick this up ASAP. To inspire you even more, you know who else shows up? Taeyeon Song's dad. Taeyeon Song from Viral Hit, Hansu Song. Yeah, his fa the fucking father pops in and that dude, bro. If you thought Taeyun was a problem, his dad built OD different. So yeah, check it out. If you already read Manager Kim, let me know what you think. If you're gonna start reading Manager Kim, let me know in the comments below. And let me know any other manual you want me to review in this type of style. I really do appreciate all the love that these videos have been getting. I really have a lot of fun making these videos. So the fact that you enjoyed as well is great for me because I can just keep on doing it and having fun. But uh, yeah, end screen. Shout out to my B and C rank hunters. Appreciate you guys for giving what you do each month. With you guys, I'm able to continue making all this dope content. And special shout out to my A rank hunters. C. James Torley, Shane Horn, Nello Lobo, Dylan Mason, Blake Roberts, Third Dynasty, Broken Rosary, Daniel Gonzalez, Victor Garcia, Mustard Gas, Zach Haji, Curtis Clarkson, Dark Titan, Jody Boy, Jakari Scott, and Sugi. Appreciate y'all so much for the extra support. And with that, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there. Black Lives Matter. And don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.